Hello, I am Dr. Kathleen Osvath, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about new concepts in vascular wound care. Every year, vast numbers of patients with vascular wounds present to their healthcare providers. This leads to $2.4 billion of healthcare dollars spent on hospitalizations, secondary complications, and outpatient services and supplies. This does not include the substantial amount of work hours lost. Psychological and social stressors associated with chronic wounds afflict the patients and their families. The necessary steps towards wound healing includes identifying and treating the underlying etiologies, controlling chronic diseases that affect healing, addressing patient compliance issues, and smoking cessation. Clinical practice guidelines have been developed to accelerate healing time, to reach acceptable healing rates, and to have good outcomes. Tissue perfusion problems must be addressed first. The underlying etiology of vascular wounds include arterial insufficiency, venous insufficiency, lymphedema, or a combination of these diseased entities. Arterial insufficiency is diagnosed initially by non-invasive means, confirmed by angiography, then treated by endovascular techniques or open surgery. Treatment goals include restoring circulation and improving tissue perfusion. Pressure relief is also important pr to protect from further injury. Offloading can be done with external measures such as specialized shoes and total contact casts or by internal measures such as surgical bone reconstruction. Venous ulcers and ulcerations secondary to lymphedema are initially treated with compression management to reduce the local deleterious effects of edema. Controlling edema can be achieved with compression management and leg elevation. Graded compression stockings, compression dressings, and compression pumps are available. Patient compliance is required to maximize healing. The reduction of venous hypertension using surgical techniques has been extensively studied. Recently, the use of endovenous techniques to treat superficial venous insufficiency, both axial and perforator insufficiency, is becoming widely accepted. Sclerotherapy and ambulatory phlebectomy to treat small varicose veins are also in the armamentarium of the venous disease specialist. Debridement of non-viable tissue is vital to healing. This can be done sharply, mechanically, or enzymatically. This helps reduce the bacterial growth and help control infection. Resolution of local inflammation and infection is achieved through the use of specialized wound care products to control exudate and bioburden. Antibiotics should only be prescribed when infection is present. Advanced wound care products have been developed and are widely used. It is important to pick the products best designed for specific clinical conditions to get the most benefit. Examples include growth factors, bioengineered skin products, and negative pressure dressings. The use of hyperbaric oxygen can be helpful in specific patient populations as an adjuvant to treatment. Inappropriately selected patients the use of these products and therapies has helped advance the healing process. The constant reevaluation of the patient as a whole must be undertaken. Understanding and identifying social issues that may impede access to care or supplies must be addressed. Treatment of underlying medical conditions, glycemic control, and smoking cessation are of great importance to treat the patient and heal the wound. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.